Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Collistead. Um, I am the public policy manager with the Iowa Developmental Disability Council. We're really glad you're here today. This is our second of four capital chats where um, Amy and um, you, mainly Amy, but um, um, I also kind of add in with some things that are going on at the Capitol and things that are that we want to highlight that we think are affecting um, through legislation people with disabilities. And so we're going to kind of share what we know. Um, and then at that point, it's kind of a conversation of questions or things that are on top of your mind or maybe some things that we're missing um, as priorities as we're looking at legislation. So I'm more excited to have you here. And I'll just kind of hit on two things that are currently going on. Um, we know that this week is funnel week. Um, it's the first deadline of bills that come out from committee. And so um, that's usually a pretty busy week and, and, and um, ties up a lot of time of our legislators, both the senators and the representatives. Um, and then the second deadline will come again at the beginning of April. Um, that'll be the, and, then, and again, then the committee work is done. Um, but then, so there's those two big funnel weeks where a lot of bills get put through the idea of the funnel. And then the last day would be scheduled for April 30th for the, all bills that, or, that are kind of being proposed and active that should be passed. Um, Amy, would you add anything to funnel week that I missed? Nope, it's just, I think one thing to note is that there's gonna be a lot of things going on next week. Um, so uh, uh, legislators might have a hard time getting back to you, but they, if you do send them notes, they will be, um, they will definitely still read them. They just might not get back to you right away, so. Right. Correct. Um, the second bill that we want to talk about is uh, there is a bill that has been passed both at the Senate and the House in regards to voting. And there's a few issues that, um, that we have concerns about um, from the DD Council in regards to the bill that affects people with disabilities. Um, you can see the bullet points on there. Um, it shortens the early voting days um, from 18 days. I think the last bill said 20 days, but it went down quite a few days. And then also the request for absentee ballots to 70 days. Um, a second thing that um, is mentioned is that mail-in ballot requests and pre-registration is around 15 days. Um, one of the other concerns we have is who can return those absentee ballots, and that's only immediate um, family members can return those ballots. And then uh, um, and then the last part is kind of making make sure they receive the ballots by election day with no postmarks past that date. Um, and Amy probably has the number, but I think I saw in the paper yesterday that um, over 2,500 ballots would have not made it because of, they were mailed before election day, but the um, auditors didn't receive them until after that date. So that would have made them um, the way the bill's written currently right now that's at the governor's table, um, that those would limit those. And then they're also going to narrow the number of boxes. And so for us, I think that we're concerned about the narrowing of dates um, because that, that doesn't allow enough time maybe for some people to get out and vote. Um, who's allowed to provide support and access and, and uh, um, who's able to assist someone, whoever that is, but even a person with a disability. And then also we're concerned about the limiting um, of boxes. And so I actually had an opportunity to go down and talk to two different committees and kind of share our concerns. But in addition to that, I also wrote a um, editorial that was picked up by the Cedar Rapids paper and Brooke, I think is gonna share that in our chat. Um, but those are, that's a bill that we're watching pretty carefully. I would just add, and Amy can add in after this, is that it is an opportunity. It is at the governor now. So if you do have concerns in regards to those issues, um, please take the time to email her or email the connection that um, they, they indicate on our infinite website or on the legislative website. It's a good opportunity to express your concern with that bill um, so that they hear from you. And uh, I, I've learned time and time again is that often we get frustrated by that by the issues that are going on, maybe through legislation, but we don't have an opportunity to send that message. Um, it is important to uh, make sure your voice is heard, so. Um, Bill, we had a question um, about the limiting the drop boxes. Yes, it is one drop box per county. So Polk County would have the same number of drop boxes as uh, Sioux County, even though there's a huge difference in population. Um, and so that was one of the 
concerns that they that they had. Um, Bill was right. I, for some reason, my brain, when I typed that up this morning, I didn't include the extra two days they added into the um, early voting period. But I just want to remind people that back in 2017, they shortened that from 40 days to 29 days. And now we're shortening it from 29 days to 20 days to, to vote early. And they're also, this new, no postmarks is a big deal. That means your ballots have to be received. You're depending on the post office to make sure they're received by election day. And that's 6,500 ballots would have been thrown out. Not 2,500, 6,000. Oh, yeah, it's a big number. So um, I know one of the things that Bill testified uh, at this, uh, they had a public hearing. So a lot of you probably saw the public hearing um, announcement that we sent out on on Facebook and email. Um, but they had a public hearing on it, and Bill spoke. And they also had concerns about, you know, some of some people don't have family members in their in their community or um, have a caregiver. Maybe they're living independently um, and don't have those support. You know. Uh, somebody in the household that can return it. Nobody else is allowed right now to return your absentee ballot. Not a neighbor, not a friend. And honestly, I know that there are some people that trust their friends more than their family members to get that ballot uh, dropped. So, um, so right now, the only thing we can do is ask the governor to veto it. So that is what, uh, if it, I have we have an action alert already set up in the, our action center that you can send a letter to the governor asking for a veto. Um, Eric, we'll answer your question here in a minute. I think we'll go through this and then we'll, Eric wants to know where we can find the recordings of the past capital chat Zooms. It should be on our website. I'll verify that that's the case, um, but we, we do have them available and um, they should be accessible on the Iowa Developmental Disability um, website. And I'll put that link here in a second, Eric. Thanks for that question. Yep. So we'll go to the next quick briefing and then we'll have time for more questions. But I wanted to kind of highlight some something, that, an issue that's been popping this week um, in the last couple of weeks are the ABLE savings accounts. I know that Last year, there was, we got really close to getting a bill passed that allowed people that have some of those older inflexible um, uh, uh, savings accounts, um, the special needs trust funds and the supplemental needs trust funds. They're kind of old um, legacy kinds of things and there isn't, um, they're, I mean, they're, they're really, you have to almost go to court to be able to get any money out of them, even for small things. So the ABLE savings accounts are pretty new still. I think they're five or six years old and, and um, federal government passed them, but um, they're a lot more flexible. You can save, put a lot more money in there and they're good things for family members and friends to be able to provide, put money into um, a savings account for the future of somebody that um, with a disability that might need those for um, education, um, job, creating their own job, buying a house, um, providing for those needs that they have that other services don't cover. And then it's not um, counted against your Medicaid or other services. So um, they're really great accounts. And so um, there's been a couple bills um, on the bottom there, you see three num bill numbers, House File 595 and Senate File 60 and 474. Um, those bills actually allow you to transfer those old trust funds and trans transfer them into an ABLE account. And none of those bills right now are moving. They had a subcommittee scheduled for Senate File 474 and House File 595 and they canceled it. So I don't think that's a good sign um, so th that, those bills are in trouble. If that's something important to you, you're going to probably want to try to talk to some of those people that are listed there, um, on the subcommittee or the chairs of the committee, because, um, they're the ones that have to get that out of committee by next Friday. Um, 
the top one, they are going to have a subcommittee on, and that one only makes some changes that were done at the federal level that allows additional people to create and sign for ABLE account um, holders. So it kind of just, it's kind of a technical bill, but it could be amended to include those transfers. So that's something that if this is important to you, you could add, ask them to add that. Um, I think probably Senator Reagan is probably gonna wanna do that um, because she is one of the sponsors of those bills and she's on that subcommittee. So, um, but they're having a subcommittee meeting on Monday at four. And I just wanna remind everybody that you can watch or participate in any Senate subcommittee um, online. Senate is only doing subcommittees on, on virtually. The House is only doing subcommittees in person if you wanna talk. You can watch it on, online, but you can't talk online. The Senate, everything's online. So um, if you go to the legislative website, which I can put in the the chat, you'll, you'll be able to find links to all of that if you go to their daily calendar. Um, their daily calendar is what has um, that. Amy, um, just to say that again, because I've turned it around a few times in my head, the, the Senate, you can fully participate. Um, you do have to register for their meetings, so you have to put in your information um, because they, they've had uh, um, some concern with that before where people were registered and then commented and there was some inappropriateness in there. So you do have to register with your name and have a um, valid email. They'll verify that, but you can do that. <clears throat> and with the house, you can listen in um, on all of, the, I think on both sides, um, when there's a bill on the legislative site, you can make comments to committee meetings and um, they will read those. They don't read them out in the meeting, but they um, read them before or after the meeting. And that's a really good way to advocate and share your voice and and if, there, if the bill came up on the Senate study bill and you had some questions about it and you wanted to indicate that in the comments, I do know on um, going back to the bill that we talked about earlier in regards to voting, I think there were hundreds of comments um, from, the, from the community. So it's a great way to share your voice. I think I, did I share, change my screen share? Cause I think- Yep, be able to see yep. we can see the Iowa legislator, yep. I wanted to just show real quick. So this is the legislative website, legis.iowa.gov. And um, if you wanna see what's go, you can uh, go to this house and Senate or down here every day are the legislative schedules. You're not gonna see anything for today, but so if you go to this, um, down here, you're gonna see like today in the chambers if you click on one of those todays and put whatever date in you want so let's just look i can't believe it's almost march say it's march monday it'll show you all of the meetings um, on the house side and you can put your comments in here so you can share your comments about a bill or you can see the agenda um or you can watch it by clicking on that and the senate's a little bit different now the senate is where you could participate so you can still submit a comment but your only option is to participate by a zoom link and that's what bill was saying you need to have uh the proper zoom link which is we learned last the january session that we learned that we need to have the proper protections in place <laughs> so you're not um hacked but um so i will go back to that um screen it's amy if i could just add to that too so um i mean anybody can make a, a comment on that what where she showed you to do that i think there was some confusion about that you only had to be a lobbyist to make a comment and that's not true any citizen can go in there and make a comment about why they're for or against a certain bill that they're considering that's right and I, one thing to note though is they are public so any comments will be public. So make sure you want what you wrote to be made public. Um, yeah, in some way, it's really a great, I mean, if there's a positive, you know, it's more accessible than maybe it's ever been. Your ability to participate in those events, your ability to share your message and your concern. But like you said, it is public um, knowledge, what you put out there. But, um, but, you know, it's interesting. There are some bills where maybe they only have, um, 
you know, three or four comments. I think that it it does still carry a lot of weight when people have their comments and they're and they're interested in a bill um, because I've seen the senators and the and the legislators comment, you know, at the beginning of the meeting. Boy, we had a lot of comments on this one, and we've listened and read all of them. So um, it does still carry weight there, and that's a great way to advocate. So yeah, actually, Ann Meyer um, read it on yeah uh, one of them. I'm gonna try to see if I can get it to move. Yeah, the um, the adult changing stations. She actually read the comments during the subcommittee meeting, and I would bet when they have the when they actually talk about it at the on the floor, they'll probably do the same thing. She'll probably read the comments she got, and they were very powerful. So, um, from some parents, so that's good. Um, a few things that are say, I, so I mentioned that you have to be out of your, by the first funnel, Bill mentioned that you have to be out of the first funnel deadline by next Friday, you have to be out of your original committee. So that first committee they're assigned to, any bills left in committee will be dead. So we know that a few things are already safe that we've been tracking. One is the adult changing stations, um, the House bill, the Senate bill did not come out of committee. So, um, but we still have the House bill, so that's okay. Um, the direct care workforce database, that's the bill that people have been working on for a while that would allow there to be a public database of direct care workers. So a family member or a person with a disability could go in and look for kind of a specialty. Uh, if they have like a, a care worker that you're looking for that has a certain specialty or um, works in a certain area, you could find um, them that place there. Um, and or somebody look, you know, close or nearby you. Um, it also- and One of the other really strong things about that database, the way I understood it also is that if you had three agencies or two agencies, you could be registered to work at each of them and your training would be shared. Um, I know having worked in the provider world for a long time, um, the way the regulations were, if you started another agency, you had to redo all your training, even though sometimes you might've had like certifications. So this really would um, professionalize that position a little more. I don't know if that's the right term, but um, it certainly would allow someone who, you know, not to have that redundancy. And that also, that kind of benefits everybody. It benefits the caregiver. Um, it benefits uh, the agencies that don't have to redo the training, but can have that shared training. So I think that's a good one. Yeah, they call that, it's a uh, portability, like you can take your license from one place to the next. Um, somebody actually talked about it like a uh, boarding pass. Now that you get boarding passes for airlines on your phone, mm -hmm. you know, so they kind of think of it as like a boarding pass that has all of your relevant data on it for um, that you carry with you from job to job rather than having to keep redoing the training over and over again. So should help that population of individuals not have to do a lot of extra work to keep doing their job. Um, the telehealth bill, this is really kind of a provider bill, but basically it's gonna help providers keep providing telehealth services. So if you're somebody that's gotten, you know, um, services from your doctor or your uh, therapist or a occupational therapist or somebody, um, they're gonna get paid equally for doing that service on the on the um, online, and this is for mental health and behavioral health only right now. Um, they can't get all of the services added. But it was really interesting. I was talking to an occupational therapist who said it's really been helpful to them because normally you have somebody come into your your office and you know they teach you how to um, adapt and move around your home and you. Uh, to live independently um, and you're showing them how to like maybe sit down in a chair or something in their office. Now they can do that while you're at your home. So it's your actual chair that you're going to be sitting in and your actual, you know, table you're going to be moving around. So it's kind of interesting. They said it's really actually been far more helpful than they thought it would be to do it virtually because you can see people in their own environment. And so there's some real benefits to that telehealth, but insurance companies don't want to pay equally. It's silly because we don't tell teachers we're going to only pay them 80% of their salary when they teach online. Um, we don't tell 
you know, Bill, just because you're doing this service, you're doing this training and online and instead of in person, we're going to dock your pay, you know, 80%. That's a good idea though, Amy. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of the ridiculousness of that. Speaking of telehealth, how many of you have had sketchy broadband? I have all the time. Uh, they're going to be looking for uh, uh, ways to make broadband, which is really fast internet available everywhere in Iowa. So rural areas, urban areas, um, all through uh, the state. And so that bill is out of committee. Um, there's also a bill that sets up a process for reporting suspected financial exploitation. So bankers and financial managers that see somebody's messing around with the accounts or doing something funny that they suspect is not right um, for a dependent adult. So somebody that maybe has um, somebody doing their finances for them or an older adult, um, there's going to be a process for reporting that. A lot of bankers and financial advisors are nervous about reporting it um, if just because they might be held liable or sued for that. So this gives them an opportunity to do that. There's another bill that actually increases the penalties for that. Um, and that is, I think, going to be in committee next week as well. Um, the other bill that we're, I guess, not happy about having come out of committee is the Public Assistance Oversight Bill, Senate File 389. That actually passed the Senate. Um, it's the bill that says they're going to start looking at all of your assets if you receive services. Um, and they're gonna look at all of your income and everybody in the household's income. They're gonna check it against national databases. And if they see something funny, they're gonna report it to Medicaid and they can take away your Medicaid, food assistance or family support, which is the family investment program. So the FISC, they anticipate that it's gonna cost the state about 1.8 million but they think they're gonna save almost 30 million, which means they think they're gonna find $30 million worth of people that shouldn't be receiving services. That's a little scary, um, how, they, how they do that. The Amy, were, were people with disabilities exempt from that or did they, well, I, I think at one time they were exempt from that, but is that now in there that they're not? They're not, that was the work requirement one that- Okay, okay, thanks. So this is everybody. And Amy, we did have a question about the house file changing for, um, I think the direct care workforce database. Can you explain why those, those house files or Senate files change from time to time? Yes. So that's the same that happened with the adult changing stations too. When a bill comes out of committee, most of the time now it changes numbers. So um, it becomes a committee bill then so the sponsor changes from the original sponsor's name to the committee is the sponsor's name. And it used to be they didn't do that a lot. Um, it would just stay in the sponsor's name, but you can imagine if the bill changes a lot in committee, the sponsor may not wanna have their name on it anymore. So, um, but that's the only difference is it, it won't, once it's out of committee, um, well, let me say, it almost always won't change after it's come out of committee. The only time it would change a number again is if it gets sent to a different committee and that committee changes it and then they change the number when it comes out of that. But I think you'll stay that workforce bill and the adult changing stations, telehealth, I think they will all stay those numbers definitely um, 389 will so and um, Senate Senate study bills and House study bills never are keep that number that's only a committee number and then once they're out of committee they automatically get a House file or Senate file number but you Amy, can I just uh, do thank you can I do just a quick plug um, I, I presented these uh, these bills to a group that Brady participates on, community ambassadors last week. And, and some of the conversation was, well, some of these don't connect with me or maybe I'm not interested in that specific 
bill. Um, but I think that this is just kind of a commercial. I always encourage people is these are the ones that are getting close and going to pass the funnel deadline. So it is an opportunity. These are the bills that are presented that, that do affect people with disabilities. Um, the, the cap chats, we're not telling people how to feel about these necessarily, just that they're they're being brought up and they're being that this is the conversation. And so you can get into the legislative website, read a little more about the bill, or even just have a conversation with your representative, your senator or your um, representative to find out how they think about that bill and provide some feedback how it affects you. And so I know Brady's team, a lot of them re re reached out in regards to the adult changing table and also the direct care workforce because they just wanted them to hear what that was like. So it's just kind of a shameless plug of um, it is an opportunity for you to kind of know these are the ones that we see. We might be missing one, but these are the ones that we see um, affecting people with disabilities that are right now currently on the floor. So. Yep. And there's a lot more in that bill tracker if you take a look at them um, and you can check further into them as well. And then there's some sometimes there's multiple bills that are the same same number. So or same same issue. Um, I did pull a couple that aren't um, are not safe and probably doesn't look like they're going to move. So um, those are some things that if you're, they're important to you, the home modification grants, that's small grants for families and individuals who want to put in a ramp or lower a, a, a sink or do something in their house that would make it more um, livable. Um, that's House File 506 and it hasn't been assigned a subcommittee and it's been around for a while. So uh, because they're up to House File 700 now. So, um, by the way, 1,717 bills have been introduced this year so far. So that tells you how many bills they're looking at. Um, another one, I know, you know, a lot of the people, a lot of the service providers, long-term supports and services providers just have not had increases in rates for a really, really long time. And so this bill, Senate File 379, was an effort to try to get um, some more movement on that and try to get legislators to take, have DHS take a look at the rates and kind of come back with recommendations. Um, and that's not moved yet. And then there's another bill that would add transportation. I know transportation is a huge issue for people, would add it as a core service for regions. Um, you know, I think everybody would think that's a great idea, except they got to have money with it, right? So it's not free. <laughs> so um, I think that's what's held that up is it needs to have some some money with it. Um, I don't know, is there anything in the chats that we want to catch up on? That was all I had to highlight at this point, but um, happy to open up the discussion and talk about anything in particular. I think the only other thing we didn't mention in the chat was I think um, Diane had mentioned right at the beginning that there that she had reached out to her legislator and right now they're tremendously busy and and we would echo that in a large amount. We know that they're tremendously busy. I do know um, I've been emailing people about the capital chats, um, a lot of our representatives and also our legislators and also about our town hall meeting that's following this. Um, a lot of times they they're their aides or their support have replied back and said, we're reading these, we're getting to these in the evening. And so I would I would echo that too. They are tremendously busy, but it doesn't mean that they're not so busy that you can't send a message. You just may not get a response, so. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's the big piece. And also don't, if you, if you don't wanna type out it, um, go ahead and videotape yourself saying your message. You probably need to do it really quickly because it'll be a big file, but you can send a videotape to your legislator too, or pin it to their social media sites. Um, it's another good way. I also have been telling people kind of going old fashioned this year. Think about it because um, I think this is a good year for postcards, like get out the old postcards and write a note. Um, you know, it is, I think that I heard from one legislator who said that they are enjoying getting the postcards and going old, old school again because um, they get so many emails now. So don't, don't, um, I also think for those that can handwrite them, I think those are, that's a good opportunity if you can handwrite it because not a lot of people take the time. So um, 
got a lot of questions about your town hall, Bill and Brooke. Do you want to uh, put a plug in for that? Yeah, um, so immediately after that, we're going to have a town hall meeting. We're go we've invited, um, right now we currently, we're pretty excited. We have over 88 people registered. Um, I just had in the chat, I'm wondering if Emily can send out a link to people if they are interested in staying with us through the lunch hour. Um, but we're just going to do a quick welcome and talk a little bit about the DD Council, make that pretty brief. And then you can see um, one of our presenters is actually with us today. Brady Werger is going to tell his self-advocate story. Um, we're also going to talk a little more. We're going to have Amanda Milham um, speak about the adult changing tables. Um, she's the parent educate or parent advocate and head coordinator of changing spaces in Iowa. And then we have one of our DD council members, Carol Cross, um, who's going to provide an advocacy story from a parent's perspective. Um, right now, we're pretty excited, even though they're busy, we do have over eight, um, I think it's eight actually, um, legislators um, attending with us that day, um, today at noon. And so at the end of our presentation, we hope to have some time where they can ask some questions or make some comments to our presenters. Um, we did kind of limit everybody or ask people to kind of present for about 10 minutes. So we hope that we might have some time at the end to have some conversation back and forth. But um, we, I know there's a number of people I think that are on today, our cap chats who are joining us, but if you're not, um, we, we can send a invite out here. Um, Emily, are we able to do that? Yeah, I'm checking on it right now. I think technically the registration has closed at this point, but I'm going to see if I can um, find a way to get around that here. Okay. Thank you. We're sorry if we missed you in the invite for that. We apologize. So I we also got a question about, and I'm going to pull it up here really quick, and I'll share my screen again, about um, best way to get in contact with the governor's office. and. I, um, let me see if I can share it again. Okay. So hopefully you can see the, this is the InfoNet website that we go to. And if you go to take action, it should be on the top still. Um, a little slow here. Nope, I'm gonna make it at the top. I'm gonna move this up right after the meeting. So I'm gonna adjust this so it only goes to the governor's office. I should have done that before this call, but I will do that right after. So it'll be live. And what it'll do is just have the brief explanation of Senate file 413. And then I will make it so that your message goes directly to the governor and all you can have to do, since I've been on this site before, it doesn't make me send in my information, but you just start writing. So I'll make it so it says, veto election changes and and then you can write your message about why that's important to you and then just click send message so that's on the take action piece but i will make sure that it is what you see when you first come up here right at the top um i thought i had up updated this but apparently it did not so that's also where you can find bill's blogs he, probably, he put some uh, some great stuff up on Mondays, right? Mondays are your yep. So he's he writes some stuff here, um, and uh, there's some good information for advocates, like ag advocacy why it's important, and kind of gives you a little tip. It's always pretty short, so you can read it quick and kind of get your your weekly advocacy tips. They're all right there. And of course, the guide, if you haven't gotten it in the mail yet, I haven't gotten mine, but it'll be coming. It's got everything you need to know there too. Boy, my internet is so slow. It's forever to load up. There it is. Got lots of stuff in it. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. It tells you the steps to the process. And I'm trying to get down, it tells you some information about the leaders, but alphabetical lists because in our we go by district here but then it'll show that you can look up your legislator and find their address so if you decide to do a postcard your ad the address is right there i'd send it to their home address um and then their phone number if you want to call them or their legislative or personal usually i use i would only use the legislative during the legislative session and then use their personal one 
like over the summertime. But it's got lots of good information on there that you can find. Anybody else have some? Stop sharing that. Um, I just wanted to point out to everybody in the chat to go to look at the chat. Um, Emily has opened back up the um, invite so people will be able to do that and, and register for our town hall meeting. Um, and if we missed any of you who are on here, we'll make sure that we, we continue to try. I mean, it's kind of an always going to make sure that we have the most current um, communication and access and availability to people so that we have your current uh, contact information. So truly apologize if we missed you, um, but um, you are able to register now for that. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about or one of your issues that you want to put a plug in for? It's Friday. Can you guys believe it's almost March? I know we should be happy the snow is going to melt, but well, I think something we're done. going once, going twice. Can I say something? Sure, Brady. So, um, you know, as a climate advocate, I just wanted to say, since I um, have been able to move through the Glenwood Resource Center into the community, I've built a really good relationship with uh, my state uh, representative and my state legislatures. Um, and it's neat to know that they said that I could call them for any concern or issue that I have. Um, it's great to have that support um, because I didn't always get that support growing up um, as a child with an intellectual disability. Um, so having the support from my local state reps and senators is just awesome. And I just want to commend them for the work that they do because um, without our state reps and senators, um, people with disabilities wouldn't be able to live a fair life for people. Um, the, these state people are really fighting for people with disabilities and I just want to commend them. Thanks for everything you do, Brady. No problem. I, I'm glad to do it. Amy had mentioned earlier that I tried to provide a blog, but that was one of the main points I've heard is, you know, right now all the legislation is coming through and sometimes it's hard to build a relationship with a um, representative when they're so busy, with the legislator when they're so busy. So Brady um, invited a number, his two uh, um, legislators to a number of our events during the summer. I think one attended in July and one attended in August and to our Make Your Mark concert conference. And, and he's building that relationship well before um, it's time to um, ask for maybe more of a difficult question. So I think that really is a great way to, to build those uh, connections, right, Brady? Uh, yeah, yes, Phil, I agree. Um, so. All right, well, thanks guys. And hopefully you'll join us at the town hall too. I'm, yeah, I'm thank you listening in so it'll be awesome see you guys thanks for coming see you in march yeah thanks guys see you in march